Today I'll be showing off a very powerful mathematical tool called Desmos. This, can, this program can easily be used to enhance many classrooms. All we need to do is go to desmos.com. So many students will actually already be familiar with Desmos for its graphing calculator capabilities. So let's take a moment to look at those. So all we have to do is once we're at desmos.com's front page, we go to start graphing. This is of course the big red button. From here, we can actually graph many equations. We can choose to enter them in directly just by typing them in here. So we can find all of our variables and we'll see how it actually graphs it as we type it in. And this can be very convenient. But what's nice is Desmos can also be used for things that are a little bit more complicated. So perhaps we want to take a look at something a little bit more circular. We could, of course, start in our standard form like this, but instead, let's take a moment and make things just a little bit more challenging. So, as we go in with these, we can type them in, once again, using these buttons here, or we can instead use the keyboard as well, if that's actually easier for you. So, what's great about Desmos is just the sheer amount of options available for trying to map these out. And this is just part of it. So we can easily see where things are happening on each one of our cases. And here, with just these two, we can already find our key intercepts. This is very convenient, but perhaps it's getting messy. We can easily choose to hide something and take it back. And these are just some of the things we can do with this. But one of the greatest features of the graphing calculator portion is how easy it is to manipulate the features. So, for example, if I wanted to just move this circle, I can just start changing the numbers slightly. And we can see how things change again and again. And this is a good way to help students begin to see the relationship between the numbers and how they will affect the graphs. But there's still far more we can do with this. Even if we don't know explicit functions, we can actually take these and do regression lines as well. So let's give that a try. So we're going to go to the Add Items and start with a table. From here, we'll choose a couple of simple values. We'll start with 1, 2, then of course 3, 4, 5. Desmos can already start to plan those out for us, making things kind of simple. Now, for our Y1, let's choose some other numbers. We'll just go with 2, 8, 24, and 48. Oh, I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, these should be good enough. So, we have the problem that we can't see all of these numbers. We can move things around by clicking on the screen and dragging, but still we can't see them all. We're using the scroll wheel, we can choose to zoom out. But as you're probably, probably noticing, we're losing a lot of information by doing this. So what we can do to make sure that everything is more visible is we go to our little graph settings here, that little wrench. We're going to click on it. And we're going to change our axes. So we're not doing much in the negatives for x. So I'm going to make this pretty small here, so we can still have a good view of the line. From there, we're only going out to 4, so why don't we then just stop at 5? We can do something similar for our y-axis as well. We just want enough to see the bottom of the line. And from there, we don't need to go all the way up to 96. We can just start up at, say, 50. From there, we get a nicer view of what we have. So, for our regression line, we needed to estimate this for us. So, we want to refer back to the terms they have. And this is another nice feature of Desmos, is that we can actually use subscripts as well, which we put in automatically for us, referencing the lists created. So, we don't want to use equals because that's going to try to define a new function. We want it to estimate the values already there. So, instead of equals, we're going to use that little tilde on the keyboard. And from there, we just set up our functions as we would. So, that's just going to be a of x1 plus a b. And from here, we can see a, regression, a linear regression line. But, and while this gives us a good idea of where the points are and where they're going, 
we can do a little bit better because we might notice that these numbers aren't very linear. So Desmos is not limited to just doing linear regression lines. Instead, we can even do uh, exponential regression lines. All we need is the general form of the equation, and we're going to type these in. And it's able to give that to us as well. So we can already predict newer and greater things from this. And this is just some of the ways we can expand what the kids may already know and make things a little bit more usable. But what's fantastic about Desmos is how much else it can do. So something else we can do to make things better is we can actually go to a teacher part of Desmos. So in the uh, address bar, you're going to type in teachers.desmos.com, and it's going to take you to a new location. And from here, you can find a lot of different lesson plans available of what can be done. And these are actually pre-generated and made by many other users. If you become familiar enough with Desmos, you can actually create your own and share them with the rest of the community. So in this example, we're going to find some activities that we can do with our students to make things easier and hopefully make things more clear. So. For this case, we can look, say we want the students to explore exponentials, but we want to make this a little bit more of an engaging activity instead of just having them punching in numbers. <clears throat> so we'll take a moment to look at this Marble Slides Exponentials class. So the Marble Slides we can find under many of the different types of the Desmos activities, and we can actually get access to it by cre clicking to create a class code. It's recommended that when you do this, you create a class code for each individual student. Now, some of these programs allow you to edit them, but it should be noted that some of them, they keep the programming as a proprietary software, and you won't have direct access to edit these. So you unfortunately have to take some of them as they are. So once you've created your classroom, it's going to give you a class code. You can enter these codes in and have the students access the class by going to students.desimos.com. From there, it's going to ask them to enter in the code, so we'll do that and we'll actually be able to join in this classroom. Now, you'll have to have your students choose their names. It's recommended that you just have them use their names, as this can be kept pretty private. And from there, the students can actually jump right in. And it's going to give them little activities to learn how first how it works and then what goes on. And this is part of the fun of the marble slides. So we just simply have the marbles falling and trying to hit the stars. Now, this is a simple example to show how the system works. But as things go on, they begin to have to actually change things. As we can see in this first one, we get the first star, but that's about it. So if we want to change things up, we have to start manipulating the formula. In this one, it's learning a little bit more about how we can move things from side to side. So perhaps we see that right here at the 15 is where the ball is, so we can change it to 15. And already we can see that while we'll hit more of the stars, we're actually blocking one off. This should allow the students a little bit more chance to engage with the material and play around with it too to see what will actually work, what changes. And this is just some of the things we can do with it. But this is just what we see from the student end. We can also check what happens from the teacher's end as well. From the teacher's screen, you can actually see everything that's going on. You can even see where the students are at any given moment. In this case, we can just see where I'm logged in already. But we can check to see what they've done, how they're going about it, and the method they're using. So these are just some of the things we can do with Desmos and use within the classroom. I hope this was helpful, and if you have any questions, leave a comment, and we can get to that. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.